Welcome to ETF.com University, where we demystify the world of ETFs. My name is Dave Nottig. I'm the Managing Director here at ETF.com. Today, we're going to go right back to the very beginning and cover some of the basic ideas around ETFs, what they are, how they work, and how they can help you meet your investing goals. Let's start by talking about why you should even be watching this video. Well, in short, it's because ETFs have really won the battle for investor dollars. They're the fastest growing financial product in history. In fact, the ETF growth story since the invention of them back in the 1990s has just been nothing short of spectacular. So much so that I predict there are going to be more assets in ETFs than there are in mutual funds in just a few short years. So how did this explosion in investor interest happen? Well, the easiest way to think about ETFs is that they're really just a kind of technology. And like many technologies, cell phones or computers, there was actually a long buildup and then sort of a, everything changing all at once. It wasn't that long ago, we all thought our Motorola flip phones were pretty darn cool, but it, it wasn't until the advent of the smartphone that we realized, hey, this thing can do a lot of different stuff. ETFs are kind of the same. So let's start with the most basic question, which is what the heck is an ETF even? Well, let me introduce you to the ETF.com mascot. He's a platypus and we've sort of nicknamed him Eustace. And the reason we look at the platypus is because when you look at a platypus, what people most often think is what the heck is this thing? Is it a, is it a dog? Is it a duck? Is it some sort of weird beaver? Well, the reality is, not that I'm a zoologist, it's kind of a mashup of all of those things. It's got some of the features and benefits of being a water creature and a land creature. And that's kind of what ETFs are too. They're kind of a mashup of two different things. An ETF is a little like a mutual fund in that it's structured and it's regulated and it's managed, but it's also a little bit like a stock because it trades all the time whenever the markets are open on an exchange, just like a stock. You can do stock-like things with it. Like a mutual fund, it can give you access to a whole basket of securities, stocks, bonds, commodities, pretty much anything you can think of. But unlike a mutual fund, you're in control of how you access it. Now, in future videos, I'm gonna get into a lot of detail about the how of all this, how the ETFs do what they do. But first, let's jump into the why. What is it about ETFs that make them so interesting for investors? I think ETFs have won this sort of battle for investor attention for five key reasons. They're cheap, they're transparent, they're easy to trade, they're tax efficient, and they're diverse. So let's look at each one of those. When we say cheap, what do we mean? Well, we mean really, really cheap. Here's a portfolio we track at ETF.com and it's, it's really just the cheapest entry in each of the major six asset classes. When we started tracking this portfolio back in 2008, the all-in costs were about 0.16% or 16 basis points. Now it's 0.05% or five basis points. To put that in perspective, you can take $100,000, get access to 6,500 stocks, 4,500 bonds, the full suite of traded commodities, real estate, every major market in the world for $50 a year. Now, to be clear, I'm not suggesting you go buy this exact portfolio and these funds and these weights. This is just an example of how cheap cheap can get. To put it in the perspective of a mutual fund investor, the average mutual fund charges about one and a quarter percent. The average ETF charges about 50 basis points or half a percent. Now, to be fair, you can get some extremely low cost index based mutual funds, and you can also find a few ETFs that charge way more than 1%. But in almost every asset class, your cheapest alternative is probably going to be an ETF. They're actually more efficient by design, and that efficiency shows up in your pocket each year. Investors are saving tens of billions of dollars a year in fees that they're just not paying to the mutual fund industry. The second big reason for the popularity of ETFs, I think, is transparency. Now, the vast majority of ETFs show you their complete holdings every single day. Now, you may ask yourself why you should care. Do you really need to know every single security you own and exact weights? But it's actually sort of one of the fundamental principles of investing. Know what you own know why you own it. And the transparency of ETFs makes that trivial. Maybe you work for Apple and you don't want your equity ETF to be overexposed to Apple more than you might already be in, say, your company stock plan. Or maybe you just want to be able to load everything into a piece of analytics software to monitor your exposure to, say, technology. 
Or maybe you have found an active ETF that you really like. Well, transparency keeps that portfolio manager honest. You can't do things like window dressing when the windows open all the time. The third big reason people like ETFs is the T, right? The, the trading, the exchange trading, the first two letters of the ETF. Now, we're a long way from the days when folks like Eddie Murphy screamed and yelled and handed paper tickets to buyers and sellers, but because ETFs do trade on an exchange, you get quite a few advantages over mutual funds. First, you can make a trade anytime you want to. Feel like getting into a tech fund at two o'clock in the afternoon? You don't have to wait till four and see how tech closes. You can buy in right now. Anytime the markets are open, you can get that price and it's determined based on what somebody else wants to sell. The same way that the price is determined for stocks. You buy your shares from another investor who wants to sell. Now you may be wondering how you can know if that's a good price, but ETFs are designed from the ground up to help ensure that the price you pay is fair. We'll cover the details of how that works in the next video. But 25 years of trading has shown us that the process works. Number four on the ETF hit parade is tax efficiency. These same mechanisms that keep ETFs trading at fair prices also help ETFs get rid of low basis securities all the time. What that means for you is that for decades, most ETFs have never had to distribute a capital gain. It's not a tax dodge, it's just a deferral. You still have to pay taxes on your actual investments if you invested in a taxable account, just like you bought any other security but you won't usually get the same surprises you get from mutual funds where you didn't do anything, but you got a capital gains distribution. Last but not least, and actually maybe most important of all, ETFs have given investors just an unbelievable menu of choices. With over 2,200 ETFs currently trading and another 2,000 in the works, there's definitely something for everybody here. Whether it's commodities or stocks or bonds or gold or real estate, emerging markets, frontier markets, you name it. If it's liquid enough to own, chances are there's an ETF to get you exposure. And if that sounds overwhelming, well, that's what we're here to help with. Our goal here is to make this as easy and demystified as possible because ETFs are just not going anywhere. If anything, ETFs keep getting better and better. I mean, just look at how fees have come down for the past decade. ETFs are constantly evolving, constantly getting better and cheaper and more useful. And it's never too late to jump on board the ETF bandwagon. Honestly, your portfolio will probably be better off for it. Just remember, even with ETFs, you still need to do your homework. That is, know what you own, know why you own it. So thanks for joining me today. I hope you'll join us for the rest of the series.